everyone, my name is Rhonda Robson and welcome to my Fluid Art channel. I am a fluid artist right in the middle of the United States of America in Sioux City, Iowa. Today we are going to be doing wine glass bottoms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take a bloom pour, what you're seeing right now, and turn that pour into glass bottoms that are unique, special, one of a kind. So today it's all about the bloom technique that I just did that I'm doing right now taking that and putting it on the bottom of a glass can't wait to show you this welcome back we're going to be cutting the skins off of my tiles and I've already done a few of those over here because the other day when I was creating talking about I was going to be creating um, these wine glasses i actually dipped these ones so these ones right here i dipped and it was a process but i uh was like how if there's a better way to do this and then somebody on facebook her name is deb she's in the sheila art group with me she talked about how she uses skins from tiles and I just happened to have a bunch of tester tiles that I was working on in a previous video on coming up with different cell activators and different formulas to make the bloom technique. So I already had those. So then the other night, as soon as I got that, I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and see if it works. It works slick. I have about 10 of these already that I have oh, uh, peeled off of my tiles so what i want to do is i want to show you how i do that with these so you're going to need a straight edge um, i kid my husband i call it an exacto knife all the time because <laughs> it's exact and anyway i don't know that's just the the term i use but he gives me a hard time but you're going to need a straight edge um, to cut okay our box cutter however you want to say it and then you're going to make sure that whatever you do your design on whether it's a bloom uh, a dutch pour whatever that is you're going to need to make the paint thick enough that when it dries that you can peel it off and it is a gloss tile okay so this just happens to be i think it's about a six by six tile that i got at lowe's and um yeah and it worked really slick so you're going to want to make sure it is gloss or it's not going to peel off okay no texture whatsoever on this and then each time you paint you're going to want to make sure that there's no fingerprints right for uh, that oil uh, so when i go to redo this again i'm going to have to make sure i put some type of alcohol or windex or something to clean those off all right well let's get started so here is a tile. We're going to go ahead and cut this one. And the key here, and I'm going to get my glasses on so I can really see, is you're going to want a straight um, edge that is sharp. Mine happens to be kind of dulling, so I'm going to have to be very careful on that. Watch your fingers. Never have your fingers in the way of the straight edge that you're, you're going to slice your stuff. So make sure you have your hand on wherever you're going to be, per, you know, Get that solid in there. And then you're gonna start clear at the top, right? So not just in the corner, but clear at the top. And you're just gonna come down almost in an angle so it starts to peel it up and go all the way off the side. And then you're gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna come all the way off the side. Whoops, better come back in here too fast. That's the key too, is just take your time with these. You want it to go well, you don't want to accidentally, like I just did there, um, cut into the design that you're trying to peel up. So, all right. Now, depending on if you have cracks in your paint, you might not notice it when it's wet or when it's dry, but when you start to peel it, let's see, you can kind of see I've got a couple here, that that actually got cleared down when I did my swirls. I did my swirls got cleared down into the paint and it just never quite went together and that's okay uh, I'll show you how to peel it very um, efficiently the best that you can uh, while you're working around these swirls and stuff okay so then you're gonna want to pick a corner um, any corner is fine so I'm gonna pick this one here and you're just gonna lift it up and just barely lift a little bit at a time and then if you need your 
um, straight edge, it's right there to help you lift that little bit that may be sticking. And then if there is something that's sticking, I went to another corner. Um, and it seemed to work really well. And then, oh my goodness, this one is going to be a tough one. This is a good one for you guys to see because the other ones weren't quite as tough. This must be a little thinner paint. Um, I must have spin it, spun it off a little bit more than I did the other ones. Okay. All right. I'm just going to make sure that these sides are all up. <clears throat> that side's up. Let's go along this here. Make sure that's all up. There we go. So again, the paint has to be fairly thick in order to peel it up. So right now what I'm fighting with is that I did, I spun this one off probably just a little bit too much. Okay, let's see. Just be careful, just kind of come around the edges a little bit at a time. And I always go down closer. So I try to get closer to the bottom here. Don't pull from here or you're going to rip it. So always go down a little closer to the actual tile and that will help. Okay. There we go. This side over here is going to be a little bit more trickier, I can tell. All right, let's get down in here. My fingernails underneath there. Okay, there we go. All right, and the closer you get to the middle, the thicker it really is. But still, because I did the swirl in the middle, I've got to be really careful. So I continue to go around the edges lifting up until I get to the center and I can really pull it up. So there you go. So what I can do is, you know, just I won't use these areas over here for my wine glass, right? I'll use that and then that. So this, these ones, because they're small, um, I just happened to purchase larger rims here. And so I can only really get two <clears throat> here on this one, which is fine. I'll use them for, I'll use the skins for other um, things. Maybe some, I don't know, maybe some jewelry or something. I don't know. Or magnets. That'll be fun. All right. So let's go ahead and do another one for you. Let's do, I'm going to do this one here. This one looks like it's going to be a tough one. It kind of grazed right there um, through the process. Okay, again, so I'm taking my X-Acto knife is what I call it, or a um, straight utility knife, I think is really technically the term. And I'm just going from corner to corner and utilizing my thumb on the um, utility knife and pushing that down. So now I just grab the corners and I just slightly go around and around um, a little bit at a time, just making sure that I don't tear anything or I don't accidentally, you know, um, keep the design on the tile. So the thicker the paint is, the more likely it is going to come off pretty easily. So here's another one. I'm using my thumb. You can kind of see it's on the side there. And I'm getting up underneath as I 
push this um, utility knife into the paint um, and I'm just kind of making that straight line um, right there. And I want to make sure I'm safe, right? I don't want to cut myself and, and accidentally put it into my uh, hand that's just over here. And, you know, just safety first, always, especially when you're using something like a sharp knife, like a utility knife. All right, again, just kind of pulling up the sides and the corners, being careful not to tear anything in particular. And then if you need a little bit more of the straight edge, you just kind of go over it, whatever area you need or utility knife. And like right there, I needed a little bit more um, cut. So yeah, must have been kind of a dull knife right there as I was trying to get that. So once you get the corners, it gets a lot easier to pull off the, the skin. Doesn't that look great? So yeah, <laughs> I think it's gonna be amazing. So thanks, Deb, <laughs> appreciate that. All right, one more to go. This will be the last one I do. Um, and then I will show you how to glue. So it seems like, you know, as you start your kind of your groove, this is why I do a number of them at the same time, it's a lot easier. So you just kind of grab the corners, start pulling the sides, and then um, as you get to the corners, like I said just a few minutes ago, sometimes once you get the corners all done, that's the hardest part, and then the center comes off really easily. All right, so. There we go. Those are there. There's all my skins. Well, not all of them. I've got some more off to the side too. So the next step will be then to cut the circles, to cut these um, to match the glasses that I'm going to use. So make sure that you don't just use, like I'm going to show you right now, I purchased, oops, I purchased two different sizes, two different kinds of glasses, which has two different sizes of the bottom. So make sure you don't just use one as your guide if you have multiple glasses that you're doing. So I'll be using both of these um, to cut here in just a moment. All right, I'll be back in just a moment. Put those off to the side. Bye for right now. Okay, so now that we have the skins, I want to cut the sizes for my bottoms. And I'm going to use these two glasses. Actually, I have three glasses, so I'm gonna grab the third glass. Um, we're still gonna need a straight edge, and you're gonna need to have a tile uh, because you're gonna be cutting them on the actual tile, okay? So let me grab the other glass. Okay, so I have three glasses. I have this one, I have this one, and I have this one, and each bottom is slightly different. So I'm gonna make sure I make I do enough of each one of those. So I'll do it in threes, uh, where I'll cut three of the same, um, or two of the same, and then, yeah, I'll just go from that way. That's how I'll do it. All right, so this one right here, what you'll wanna do is you'll just wanna try to find, um, like this right here has this kind of, um, kind of tore a little bit. This is a nice good area. So just find that spot that you want to keep. Um, and here will be another spot. It'll be, well, may have to be here. So if I'm here, I mean, I can be there. Yeah, okay. So, so I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna push down on it. This will end up sliding, so be careful. So push down on it and then cut around the base, careful of your fingers. Okay, so there's one. Let me go ahead and undo that. So 
So there's the bottom of that one there. And then we'll put that back down and we'll do one of these. Let's see, that's, that one's too big. That one's uh, just slightly too big, but I think I can get it. Let's do this one here, hold on. Whoa, don't break your glasses either. Okay, yeah, I'll use this one. Okay, I'll just do two of this one. So we'll get that squared up where you want it. Cut around your edges. Careful of your fingers. And then peel it up. Jeez Louise, I can't seem to fix that. Okay, so there you go. And I saw that this was a little bit, so I'll probably just you know, make it a little bit more circular here and then in the center more like that. I'll figure it out, but there you go. So there's one and there's two. Really pretty, right? So I have this extra skin now that I'm just gonna have off to the side. I don't need this little piece. I can throw that away. And I'm just going to put that off to the side and utilize it some other with something else. If I have smaller wine glasses, which I do, um, the base, then I can possibly, you know, add, do that one. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's do another one just so you can see it. And I'll do a different, put that over here. You can kind of see it better, even in the black better. I don't know if you can see that or not off the side. Yeah, I think you can. Okay. So let's do this really pretty pink one here. And let's figure out where we want it. Okay, so once you find the spot that you want, gently take your utility knife and press down as you're holding the glass down, cautious of where your fingers are at. Always be cautious of where your fingers are at. Um, we don't want you to slice that. So then you just want to take on the other side of the skin, you're just going to want to make sure that you put it where you want it again and then go around the edge of it. You can adjust it um, if there, you didn't get quite the circle that you want. You can, I see that there's a piece on there, so I take it back and I just kind of trim off that little piece. Or you can use a pair of scissors later on. So again, you got to be cautious on what pair of glasses that you're using and I mean glasses like the wine glasses because they are different size bottoms so uh, you just need to make sure you know which size glasses that you want And I'm keeping all my excess skins off to the side, uh, making sure I don't put the white on top of the white because they kind of stick to each other. And then let's do another one. And this, this one in particular, this blue, I made for my son for Christmas. He really liked it, the blue and the black. And so again, just put the glass down on what glass you want to use. And then uh, using your utility knife, straight edge, or exacto knife as I call it, um, to cut around the circular portion of the bottom of the glass. Find your second spot, second place, second skin <laughs> circle that you want, and just go ahead and do that too as well. There we go. Yeah. Looks like I'm gonna have to cut that off a little bit more. So let's come around here and put the glass on it. So, <coughs> excuse me, I have a guide. All right, so there we go. Okay, so the next step is to glue it on the bottom of the glasses. So I'll show you that here in just a few moments. I'll get this cleaned up and we'll go to that. All right, bye for now. Okay, everyone, I am set up. I have got all my glasses over here and I have each one has their own um, skin that I am going to glue on. My hope is to use this Liquitex gloss medium and I'm going to start by just 
um, dribbling it in there uh, to see how that works or I might use these but I don't want to get streaks in there to do that so um, that's my plan right now and let's get started so some of these do have some jagged edges so I do have a pair of scissors here that I will use to cut a little bit if I notice that there's some jagged edges on there um, I'm not going to worry about the um, straight um, edge right now I think that it's circled enough to make sure that that's underneath there and then if it comes up over it um, so like if it's over the side, I can do that at a later date. But right now I just really want to focus in on gluing things down. So let me get my brush out of the way, my paint out of the way, and let's get started. So this is, again, like I said, the Liquitex Gloss Medium. And this is what a friend of mine on Facebook had told me in our Sheila Art Bloom Facebook group. Her name is Deb. She said that works really well. So that's what I'm working with. So I'm just going to just drizzle it on to begin with to stick it um, and to let it sit for a little bit. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get some gloves on because I am getting a little tacky here. Okay, so here is my wine glass. Sorry. And the reason why I decided to go with skins is because my wine glasses have a dip in them. And so I'm just going to place that skin in there and push down. Oh, it looks like there's glue coming out or there's Liquitex coming out. So I've got to be careful on that. I'll just make sure it's in the center next time. And I'm going to have to really make sure that there's none on there. So let's just do this. Okay. And then what I plan on doing is I plan on just sitting them uh, over to the side here and just letting them dry um, just like that. Okay, so that's my plan is just to let it dry. The Liquitex, you're going to see it's a little cloudy and that's okay, um, but I think it's going to uh, do really nicely. So I'm just going to keep going. I'll probably fast forward this for you so that way um, you can see me doing it and each one that I do and how I'm doing them. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm setting them over to the side on a silicone mat to help with the peeling off if it does get stuck down below it. So. I'm, I'm starting to kind of get into my groove and know about how much I need. So I just take a couple drops of the medium and I kind of spread it around with my sponge brush and then I press down making sure I press down in the center because the the center is devit not deviated it's there's a dip in it right and I want to just keep make sure I press that down really good and get all my sides and the less I use of the medium the better and if it accidentally goes over to the side and you need to um, cut that later after it's dry So I'm planning on, this is, these are actually for Christmas gifts. So this probably won't show until right around Christmas. Christmas is next week and um, next weekend. And so these are Christmas gifts, but um, I am planning on, I am a CEO of a nonprofit organization and we're doing an event that um, will have wine with it. So, and they get their own wine glass when they come in for their testing. Um, they're they're going to be sampling different kinds of wine. And so this is kind of, although this is for Christmas gifts and I wanted to make them really cool, but this is kind of like my test to see if I can mass produce something like this uh, fairly quickly um, to have something really uh, cool object that they can take home. So there's going to be an etching on the glass and um, we're working on getting that done for the logo of the event. But then um, I just, I mean, of course this is my love. I love 
fluid art and abstract art and I've been really enjoying the bloom techniques and learning different ways to do the bloom technique using uh, not not using uh, the Aussie Floetrol because to get it, it's, uh, it's a great product and a lot of people will think that it's the best product and it probably is, but um, I just don't want to pay for the cost that of it plus delivery. Plus when I need Floetrol, I just go down the street at my local um, Lowe's or Home Depot and I get what I need at that time. And it's uh, $15, $16 for a gallon. So in my mind, it, it doesn't make sense to spend $62 for just a liter, which is a fourth of it. So yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. That's why I'm uh, doing a lot of bloom techniques and experiments. And uh, yeah, so if you are interested in any of that from my channel, um, I'll put the link right here so that you can see some of the experiments I've been doing with blooms. Um, this happens to be the um, experiments. These are the actual tiles I was experimenting with. And then when Deb mentioned that on the Facebook group that you can use the skins if the tiles are gloss, I mean, it was just, so I'm used, these are my experiments and they're gorgeous, right? Um, so I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm like super excited about being able to finish this and, and have these be a really cool product to um, give to my family and uh, be able to show you how to do it. But um, Thanks again to Deb. I mean, I think I've mentioned her name, I don't know how many times, and I'm not gonna mention her last name because I don't know if she wants to stay anonymous or what, um, but if she sees this and she wants me to give her credit, she's got a YouTube channel, man, man make sure you tell me, Deb, because I will make sure I give you credit because honestly, I'm, I'm just like so impressed with that. <laughs> and maybe you got it from somebody else, but yeah. This is brilliant and like I barely use any of this and I have done, um, well, eight times three, so 24 glasses in a very short amount of time compared to these ones that I dipped and had to wait for them to dry and the bottoms, although the bottoms are kind of cool, but that's not very cool. That one's okay, but I mean, in, in just a matter of time, I've got these experiment skins on here looking like amazing glasses. I mean, I'm, just, I'm really impressed, impressed, impressed. So I hope you are too. I hope you're liking this um, because it's a pretty cool thing to do. And I'm, like I said, I'm giving these away to my family for Christmas. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been giving a ton of paintings, but paintings, you know, you have to have, paintings are, are personal and you have to like what you get. And if you don't like it, even if it's from your mom, you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I really want that in my kitchen or in my living room. So, um, so this is a really great way to do what I love to do and be able to um, do something for my family. Okay, well, I'm going to show you some pictures of all of them here in a little bit, um, all dried, and then I'm going to paint the bottom of them with this metallic. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, I lied about the metallic because it was not opaque enough, and so I found this black that it is. And um, so I'm going to paint all these bottoms of these glasses in black. So I've discovered too that although I painted all of these black and they looked really cool, it was a step I really didn't want to have to take. So I'm going to take two skins in the next 
video that I do and I'm going to attach both of those skins together you know the two that I get from the tile I'm going to take those and back to back the white and that way the bottom of this isn't black but it is actually um, a bloom so that's my plan for the next time go around so I can't wait to show you that I'll make sure I link the video once it's done right here and go from there I'll just let you watch me paint these in a very fast motion and uh, we'll get to the next step here shortly So all 24 are done. Um, let me just go ahead and let those dry for a while and I'll be back. All right, bye. Hey everyone. Okay, so um, I've been kind of playing, trying to figure out which bottom I like better. So um, I've got this thicker um, flat metallic pearl on here with the sprinkles of the iridescent. And then I put, then this is black, and I just put a little bit of this medium for kind of glue to add in some gold, um, and then I put gold flax on it. Then I did the same thing here, but then I used this. And then I did a light um, of the, um, this um, metallic here. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking that, that, and that. I'm not, this one right here, is not as good so it definitely needs more paint on those so I've got those kind of sitting over here drying and I'm going to um, do the other ones now so let's see this is a blue one so I think for the blue one um, it would be good and yellow and gold okay so we'll do gold on this so I will put a little bit of dab of the medium got my brush here, brush that, and then just grab some pieces of gold, just kind of sprinkle it around, a couple bigger chunks over here, let's put it on that side, there we go, and there, okay, so there's that one. So I decided that I wasn't going to do much of the, um, deco art pearl paint and and really just kind of use most of them to be the black and then with the pretty gold flakes and the pretty opaque o opaque opal flakes so what I want to make sure that you realize with these is that once they're dry you're going to want to flatten the flakes down you can you kind of see how they're standing up a little bit I just kind of like sprinkle them on there well what that does is it actually creates a ridge when you do varnish or the resin that I use here in just a little bit and then your glasses are tippy even though this is really pretty you just got to be careful and take the lessons that I've learned and once it's dry you flatten and you shake off any excess and get that off of there all right, I'm just going to let you watch the last few that I'm going to do here. Hey everyone, okay, so I have these all glued and I have the sparkles on there and it's all dried. So now I just need to clip the edges and I've done that for all of those except for this one here. So just have a couple of them that are kind of hanging off the side here. Okay, so 
you just kind of get the edges um, clean and then the next thing we're going to do is resin so i've got my glasses all set up over here and i'm going to be using um, this resin here and so yeah this is the hardener and this is the resin so it, it is a one-to-one -one ratio of each one so i'm going to put this in there and then add it to uh, the hardener to the resin so all right so we're going to put that off to the side here so again, the resin is a one-to-one -one ratio. So you've got the resin and you've got the hardener. So make sure you are precise on that. You do not want to go um, too much resin or too much hardener or it's going to not work well. Then you wanna mix, mix, and mix, and mix. And you have to mix it for the allotted amount of time. And once you've got that all mixed together, like you can see mine has a ton of bubbles. It's kind of cloudy, that's a lot of bubbles. And I was using this back of the spoon here, but that wasn't working really well. So I just decided to go ahead and get my heat gun out there. And it turns the liquid so fast and it take, gets rid of all those bubbles so fast that um, there was no need for me to actually um, spread it. And I have the cardboard on there, you see that, to protect the glasses, but I'm gonna tell you right now, the cardboard doesn't completely protect it. So I learned my lesson and I use um, tape next time. And you're gonna see that at the end, I kind of discovered that um, here in just a little bit, but I used, I just used painter tape and that just helped uh, keep the resin and any varnish off. But these are really pretty and they look really great. It's a lot of work because I accidentally, like I said earlier, uh, didn't flatten the um, flakes down and that was uh, a detriment. I had to cut a bunch of stuff off. But um, learning some lessons, make sure you learn the lessons from me too as well. Here are the products that I used for the bloom technique and I'll make sure I link it here so that you have that video for yourself as well. I had to share these photos with you. They were so cool to see so much color with those wine glasses with those little skin circles discs inside the glasses, loved it. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining me today. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. And if you like this video, I bet you're gonna like these as well. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Bye. Bye.